Hello and welcome to part 3. In parts 1 and 2 we introduced the key meta-health principles. We described how all symptoms are meaningful, explained the role of significant emotional events, the organ-brain connection, and the two-phase process of healing. In part 3 you'll gain an overview of the meta-health inquiry and how you can apply this understanding. Because it works with the body's innate intelligence, meta-health can be used by therapists and health professionals from all disciplines. It attracts health professionals from diverse backgrounds including acupuncturists, homeopaths, massage therapists, energy healers including EFT practitioners, nutritionists, doctors, nurses, physiotherapists, psychotherapists and life coaches, as well as individuals looking for a deeper understanding or a career in integrative health and personal development. Whatever your therapy background, MetaHealth gives you a structured inquiry process for uncovering the root cause and meaning of health issues, which can be used with clients, family and friends, as well as being a guide to one's own personal growth. We've met many dedicated therapists who, noticing pieces are missing from the health jigsaw, are engaged in an ongoing search for the next therapy or technique to fill in the gaps. MetaHealth takes you beyond therapies. By providing you a comprehensive framework and analytical tools for pinpointing the specific meaning behind symptoms enables us to apply our therapies more precisely and more effectively. The MetaHealth framework also acts as a research model. Through every client we work with, we learn more about the biological and emotional patterns behind health issues. Identifying and transforming these patterns is constantly stimulating and rewarding. How you choose to apply MetaHealth will depend on how you work with clients. If your work is largely conversation-based or involves one-to-one -one intake sessions, you can use a MetaHealth inquiry, which I'll teach you in a moment. This process will enable your clients to understand why they've got symptoms, how their thoughts and feelings are involved, and what needs to change, while you use the information to determine the most appropriate therapeutic interventions. If you feel that one-to-one -one questioning may not fit with your current approach, you can use the MetaHealth framework internally, noticing the interconnectedness between clients' physiology, behavior, and emotions. For example, you'll see that the clients with musculoskeletal problems have a corresponding feeling of self-devaluation, while clients with digestive disorders have problems accepting, assimilating, and letting go of things. This awareness can be used to take therapy to a level of strategy which leads to better decision making about therapeutic interventions. As with all truth-based systems, the best way of embodying meta-health is to observe it in your own life. On a personal level, using meta-health to identify your own emotional and behavioral patterns enables you to engage in both preventative care and personal development. The meta-health questioning process is based on the core principles we've previously explored and it aims to uncover specific emotional events, themes, and patterns behind a given health issue. We use this model of the two phases to work out the timings for the health issue. This model enables us to determine the timing of the initial shock or trigger, which is here at point two, the resolution at point four, and how long it will be before the symptoms abate, point eight. The information elicited provides the basis for therapeutic strategy and intervention, but only once we know the root cause should we consider therapy. So question one is, what is the symptom? The symptom opens the door to the deeper inquiry. Once we know the symptom, the meta-health maps and directory allow us to determine the organ-brain relay and then the emotional theme. For example, if the symptom is a muscular ache or pain, then we know the corresponding brain area is the cerebral medulla, which indicates that the emotional theme is self-worth. The specific location of the pain gives us even further information. This understanding enables us to identify relevant themes in a client's life just through listening to their language. If a client has a lower back pain, for example, listening out for where they feel unsupported by others or unable to support themselves. Question two. Is the client in the stress phase or the healing phase? Rather than being the problem, many of the physical symptoms we experience are actually signs of healing. If a client has a lower back pain, this means that they're already in the regeneration phase and are feeling better about their self-worth and a sense of support. To confirm which phase the client is in, you can also use the generic markers of the first and second phases. 
So for the first phase, which is sympathetic stress, you look for cold hands and feet, and you can check hand temperature with a handshake, uh, sleeplessness and insomnia, feeling stressed, anxious or worried, compulsive thinking and a high level of mental activity, usually revolving around the problem situation, uh, such as career, relationships or money or unresolved concerns, and um, things like elevated blood pressure, fast heart rate and increased stress hormone. And for phase two, which is parasympathetic regeneration, look for tiredness and apathy and an increased desire to rest, an inability to think clearly, inflammation, swelling, headaches or acute pain, uh, viral, bacterial or fungal infections, which is the cleanup crew, lower blood pressure and heart rate. The two-phase model also explains why clients can experience stronger symptoms or a healing crisis after a session. These are signs of even deeper healing. Question three, what triggered off the regeneration? Clients will often be in phase two when they come for help, which means they've already started to resolve the issue. If they're in phase one, then go to question four. Now, a good question to ask here is, what were you feeling better about in your life just before the symptoms appeared? Once you have a knowledge of meta health, you can ask a more focused question, such as, what were you feeling better about regarding an injustice where you feel you've been unfairly treated by your boss, partner or work colleague? This would be a more precise question if the case were a neck pain on the client's dominant side. Most clients' first response is usually, I don't know. So be patient and persevere. If you allow clients to talk generally about their life, you'll often hear the issue when you know what you're looking for their story will reveal the connection between their thoughts and feelings about a life situation and their symptoms. Question four, what triggered off the stress? MetaHealth explains how and why health issues are meaningful reactions to emotional stresses in our lives. A dis-ease or healing process begins with a specific emotional reaction to an event or trigger. Once we've uncovered what the client was feeling better about, we're looking for the opposite to determine the source of the stress. For example, if a client received positive feedback from a colleague just before they got back pain, then you're looking for the negative feedback that started the process. The two-phase model allows us to get even more specific. The stress phase and the regeneration phase are biologically equivalent in time, which means it enables us to determine exactly when the stress phase began. For example, if the neck pain lasted two weeks, we know that the preceding stress also lasted for two weeks. We can work out the dates and ask, what happened on such and such a date, where you felt you were treated unfairly to do with your boss, partner or work situation. Question five, what are the thought patterns behind this issue? Even more important than the external situations are the internal thoughts and feelings that led to the stress response. For example, the client may have reacted adversely to receiving negative feedback because they hold generalized beliefs that it's not fair, people always pick on me, I'm a victim. It's these negative self-beliefs that need to be transformed. Otherwise, future situations will keep re-triggering the same pattern, leading to chronic neck pain. So what's next? In part four, we'll explore how to use the information gleaned through the MetaHealth inquiry to create a therapy and coaching strategy. The goal of MetaHealth coaching is to support clients through the healing journey and facilitate them not just to release the symptom, but to resolve the core issues. In the meantime, we'd love you to experiment with the inquiry model with clients and in your own life and see what insights you gain. See you in part four.